Belgium played host to Glory's first trip to Europe in 2017 at Glory 39 Brussels. Two world title fights, a heavyweight clash, and a four-man welterweight contender tournament highlighted the 10 bouts that took place in front of an enthusiastic crowd at Forest National. The Super Fight Series began with three bouts that included a second consecutive glory victory by 19-year-old Tajani Bastani over Sabri Benhenya with a second round TKO in lightweight action. That was followed by unanimous decision victory by number five ranked welterweight Harut Gregorian, who ran his glory record to three and one. Our third fight of the night featured Glory's first ever fighter from China, as Ching Hao Meng came out on top with a split decision win over Killian Mullen in lightweight action. We continued with the lightweights when then number two ranked Marat Gregorian returned to the glory ring for the first time since losing a split decision to Sitichai back at Glory 36 in his quest for the lightweight title. His opponent, Anton Petrov of Bulgaria, making his glory debut. You can see the ovation and hear it from this crowd here for Belgium's own Marat Gregorian, who Joe has fought almost every big name in this division. Robin Van Roosmalen, Serhei Adamchuk. Mohamed Elmir and Sitichai twice. Yeah, he's very experienced fighting all across the world. So this is a huge opportunity for Petrov to not only showcase and get a great glory debut, but to catapult him as a, a big name in the lightweight division. He didn't look intimidated during that, that stare down. He didn't sound intimidated when we spoke to him at length yesterday. He did say this is the biggest opportunity of his life, and he promises not to let his fans down. He does come from a solid team, Petrov, where he's from the same team as Nicholas Larson, who um, came back from a, a long layoff and showed a great performance in his last fight. Snapping head kick there for Petrov, but it was partially blocked by Gregorian. According to the bookmakers, Gregorian listed as nearly a four to one favorite over Anton Petrov. There's that combination fighting of Gregorian, and he does a great job at controlling the center of the ring. He's gonna keep Petrov against the ropes and mix in a lot of combinations. A couple of good low kicks from Gregorian. Petrov answers back with one. Petrov is doing a good job at staying really tight and defensive. Well, Gregorian's throwing his combinations, but he's gonna have to be a little bit more active, and he just got rocked. Petrov off balance now, trying to find his focus again. Hard to do with Gregorian all up in your grip. Ooh, that uppercut was nasty. Another low kick. Gregorian staying really calm, really mixing in his punches. That's what he needs to do. He's mixing up that power, slipping in that lead uppercut. But Petrov's throwing some good counter punches. And Petrov has not fought. In nearly a year, April 2016, the last time he stepped in the ring. So if he has any ring rust, he better get rid of it quick. Those low kicks from Gregorian are going to add up. A knee from Petrov, blocks. Gregorian just does not take a step back, does he? No, he stays in pressures, but he's putting a good focus on that low kick. He's not overthrowing his punches. He's going to mix in the power of his punches. A solid first round for the Belgian Gregorian. Anton Petrov with some work to do. <laughs> Round two, Gregorian in the white gloves, Petrov in the black. I like what Petrov did there. He's not going to constantly move back. He just started mixing in some angles with his footwork. And he's a lot more active with his combinations. But he's got to get out of those corners. Starting to recognize the low kicks, and that's that angling. And he threw a nice low kick off that angle. So the Coliseum Training Center in 
Holland Ready? looking to go 2-0. Harut Gregorian winning Fight. earlier. Marat Gregorian in competition now. And then later tonight, Jamal Big Ben Sadiq. Well, both of those guys are actually from Hemmer's Gym. Excuse me, Hemmer's Gym, yes. Which, again, Jamal. also has a lot of tough fighters in, uh, in all weight classes. Nick Hemmer's the lead trainer there. You can see him in the corner now for Marat Gregorian. Break, 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 break. The Coliseum Gym Fight. was in the corner of Ms. Toddy earlier tonight, our opening contest, a spectacular knockout win for him. He improves to 3-0 and in glory. And there's a knockdown for Gregorian, a left hand. Two, three, four, that is set up from those four, low kicks. Five, six, seven, eight. Gloves up, gloves up, fight. You're right, Joe, you can tell by the way he's walking Petrov. Limping a little bit, trying to get some feeling back in those legs. Another low kick. Why those low kicks are effective is Gregorian's using the high shin, where he can get oh, good body legs. shot. And he's turned his back on his opponent. That was a low kick that stopped Four, him there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it's over. Gregorian with the knockout victory as Petrov chooses not to continue. In convincing fashion, Gregorian moved up to number one with the victory as he begins his quest for another title shot. Coming up on Rewind, a heavyweight clash and Cedric Dumbay's first title defense of his welterweight belt. But up next, keeping with the lightweights, Sinichai makes his second title defense against tournament winner Dylan Salvador and the four-man featherweight tournament where the winner earns a title shot against Robin Van Roosmullen at Glory 41 Holland in May. Glory 39 featured a four-man featherweight tournament with the winner earning a title shot against number one ranked Robin Van Roosmullen at Glory 41 Holland this May. In the first semifinal, Pet Panamroon Katmu Kao took on newcomer Alexei Ulyanov. Here are our highlights from this opening semifinal. And it was the early advantage for Pet Panamroon really doing a good job at landing his left kicks in that first round, mixing levels with it. Round two became a little closer. Ulyanov was finding a little bit more success with his boxing, was able to land some good shots back and forth. But in that third round, Ulyanov came in as a southpaw, which seemed to slow down that left kick of Pepanamarong. So it's very interesting to see who took this fight. Here are the strike stats. Punches, 39 to 12, the edge to Ulyanov, but kicks just as lopsided in the other direction. Strikes absorb, body shots, Ulyanov, primarily from the left kick. And to the head, 37 strikes absorbed by Pet Panamarov. Who's advancing to the final? Tim Hughes has that answer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of tournament action, we go to the judges' scorecard. And our five judges seated ringside score them out this way. Four of them seat about 30-27, the other 29-28, all for your winner by unanimous decision. And now advancing to the tournament final, Pet Panaroon Kiatmuka. Our second semifinal featured the return of former champion Serhei Adamchuk, looking to regain his championship form against Nafi Belolovsky, making his glory debut. Here's highlights of our second semifinal, Adamchuk versus Belolovsky. Well, it was a lot about that left kick of Adamchuk Really looking at using his boxing, trying to set up uh, those low kicks. And he did a lot of success with it in the first two rounds, but Bilolovsky started blocking a little bit more, making it a little bit more difficult for Adam Chuk to land those kicks. Um, he had his best round was his third round, but Adam Chuk was still too much for Bilolovsky to handle. Here are the final statistics, and they're pretty even, especially in rounds one, or just in round one. Rounds two and three, not nearly as close. Let's send it now in to Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three tournament rounds, we once again go to our five judges seated ringside, and here are the totals. All five scored about the same, 30-27, a unanimous decision for your winner. Now moving on to the tournament final, Serhei Adamchuk. 
So no surprise, Adam Trip moved on to the finals to face the always dangerous pet Panamaroon Cat Mukau with a future title shot on the line. Let's jump right back into our highlights from our featherweight contender tournament final, Joe. And this fight was all about the boxing of Adam Chuck versus the kicking of Kiat Mukau, which was a lot of back and forth combinations, both landing some good shots, both being active, both being countering back, um, both landing just as much, which makes this fight very difficult to score. I looked back at Robin Van Roosmalen after to see what he thought, and he thinks this fight could even go an extra round. It was just that close. Let's look at our fight statistics, and it's pretty darn close. Look at that, 72 landed for Pet Panamarong, 74 landed for Adam Chook. So it just comes down to whether the judges put more of an emphasis on punches or kicks. That's really what this boils down to. Yeah, and it was the punches to the head uh, for Adam Chuck and Kat Mukau keep landing those good, solid body kicks. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here now are the totals from our five judges seated ringside. They score this bout 29 28, Pen Panam Room. 29-28, Adam Chuk. And our three remaining judges, 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28, a split decision for your winner, and now contender tournament champion, Pat Panaru In a closely fought battle, Kiat Mukau takes the split decision victory, earning him his first title shot. That will come courtesy of Robin Van Roosmullen at Glory 41 Holland in May. The headline event in the Superfight series featured the second defense of Sidichai since his victory over Marat Gregorian at Glory 36 Germany. His opponent, Dylan Salvador, won his title opportunity also at Glory 36 by winning twice in one night to capture the lightweight contender tournament. Sinichai in the white gloves, Salvador in the black. Yeah, this is going to be a very technical fight. Both guys with a lot of experience, and even Salvador may have uh, not as much experience as Sinichai, but he has fought some of the biggest names in, in Muay Thai. If this fight goes anything like their first two, it will go the distance and it will be extremely close, Joe. Yeah, it's going to be about activity, and I think whoever could stay the most active is going to win the fight. Both of these guys, you know, can wait with a slower pace with the Muay Thai background. But Salvador was most successful in his second fight when he was countering back with a lot of combinations. If we do see a knockout in this fight, who's most likely to get it? That's a tough one to call. Um, I think it would be Sidichai really using his kicks to get it. Well, Salvador, I feel, has the advantage in the boxing, so I'd like to see him get on the inside and, and box a little bit. You saw a little trash talk type of nod from Salvador to Sidichai. Now he's smiling, having fun in there. Why not? You're fighting for a world title. Salvador's favorite weapon is that low kick. And it seemed to have worked in their previous fights where Sinichai has those powerful kicks that's easy to shut down Salvador's output. We mentioned that Sinichai, or maybe we haven't mentioned that Sinichai is a part of the Thailand military, part of the Royal Thai Army boxing team, in fact. And it was interesting to learn this week that in Thailand, each male, when they turn, I believe, 18 years old, walks into an army office and pulls out either a red or black card out of a hat. If it's red, you go into the army. If it's black, you're out. Sidichai told us, though, he, with a preemptive move, went and volunteered to be in the army as a Thai fighter. They put on Thai fights in front of the troops. So that's what Sidichai does when he's back home. And those are more boxing fights, so it's kind of good for Sidichai to help him adapt to the glory rules by working on his boxing. And that's what his camp was saying. In order for Sidichai to keep progressing and keep transitioning to kickboxing, he needs to work on that boxing. Looks like Salvador may have a slight cut under his right eye, overcommitted with that move and got caught. Break. Step back. Another 
technical round, but they are letting their hands go, Joe. A lot of activity from both fighters. Salvador comes in, gets caught with a left, and then lands a few shots there at the bell. I mentioned Van Roosmalen. Ruben Van Roosmalen sitting behind me. He is a weight class lower, but used to fight in this division. And Dylan Salvador said, listen, if I win this fight, I want to go down a division and fight Van Roosmalen. That would be an awesome fight. Both very good technical, but again, that power that Van Roosmalen is Great. showing has been very scary. Especially as a featherweight. So round two, it's a title fight, so we're scheduled for five. A close round one. Joe, did you give the edge to either fight? Well, that's very tough to call because they're both very really similar active. I can't really see who did more damage. But you can see, they basically go one for one. Break. Step back. There are the total strikes so far, and it is close. This is one of those fights that I can guarantee you at the end of the five rounds, we're not going to have a clue who has the advantage. Both men will be extremely sore, I can promise you that. Some massive low kicks landing for each fighter and punches as well. That's that low kick of Salvador that does really well. And you got to remember, Sidichai is not used to someone hitting the outside of his lead leg. So this is why that southpaw advantage for Sidichai is no longer here. And that's why it's Salvador does a good job at landing that low kick. Both men content to stand right in the middle of the ring and test their skills. Silva Salvador walked into that knee. Didn't slow him down, though. Sinichai has very good knees, and he has some good stoppage knees, and one of his best was against David Kyriak, Glory 22 France. As Salvador was going down, tried to look like an overhead kick almost. That would have been spectacular. Another razor close round between these two. I feel this is a better round for Sidichai. Sidichai's first title defense, he won by split decision over Murat Gregorian. Looks to be another close fight here tonight in Brussels. Step back. Left hand landed nicely for Sidichai. He's done well at catching Dylan Salvador as he comes in, Joe. Well, it seems to be Sidichai having the advantage in the boxing, which was surprising because after seeing Salvador's performance uh, in the contenders tournament, he showed amazing boxing. But it's Salvador with the advantage in the kicks and Sidichai with punching and boxing advantage. Some dirty Step boxing back. taking place Step inside back. right now for these two. This has been a very good fight. They'll exchange punches, they'll exchange low kicks. Step back. It's the old anything you can do, I can do better routine. Both of these guys make sure they give uh, something right back. They don't just take a punch and not give one back. So they constantly go back and forth. Salvador back to the low kicks, and that's what I said in my keys to victory. Sidichai's knees on the inside are very dangerous. Step back. The last three fights for Sidichai, a title defense win over Marat Gregorian. He won the title from Ruben Van Roosmalen, and he earned a right to fight for the title with a win over Marat Gregorian again. Step back. Sidichai does not get an easy fight anymore. They're all tough, including this one against Salvador. Well, his glory experience has been contender tournaments and world title fights, and that's all he's really had. And we're here in Brussels. And of course, when you think of muscles in Brussels, you think of Jean-Claude Van Damme, and that's who Salvador said inspired him to be a kickboxer. Well, it inspired most people, and that's what got me into martial arts. John Pagland, John Claude Van Damme was your guy, huh? The movie Kickboxer and Bloodsport. Step back. A 
minute to go here in round three. Dylan Salvador in black gloves, Sinichai in white. If you're just joining us, it's the second title defense for Sinichai. Salvador earning this title opportunity by winning a four-man contender tournament back in December. Won two fights and one night. Very quick run to the title, Stand winning back. your glory debut as a tournament, and then Great. second time right. in glory fighting for a world title. And remember, Salvador just 23 years old, and yet, what experience he has. 61 professional wins. Number 62 would by far be his biggest. He's doing pretty well so far, but we said earlier, we thought it would be a tough decision for the judges. It has been extremely close. Like I said, they keep going one for one, but it's Sinichai doing a good job with his boxing and knees. Salvador needs to keep up with his low kicks. Five. We are entering the championship rounds, four and five here on our Glory Super Fight Series main event, but still to come tonight, little twist of fate. It'll be Chopper Chai Lewis Perry and Hesty Gurgis in a heavyweight contest. Nice exchange there, and Salvador seemed to get the best of that one. Yeah, they, they keep going back and forth. But it's Salvador that really needs to be first and establish his momentum. Can't let Sinichai keep throwing his kicks in his knees. Strikes landed. Right. Look how close it is. And remember, this is just one guy hitting a button. So his guess is as good as yours. It's basically even Steven into round four. Joe has it two rounds to one. Let us know what you think. Reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. We're everywhere. Glory kickboxing. Sounds like Salvador's corner time to go for the low kick. Every time he lands it, you hear the his corner scream there. Away. And Muay Thai kicks right. are scored better than punches. In glory kickboxing, that's not the case. No, you're looking for clean scoring strikes, damage, right. knockdowns, and that's why the glory scoring is made for action and knockouts. That's why it's one of the most exciting sports on the planet. Both these men in fantastic physical condition. They look like they're in round one, but they're in round four. That's the Muay Thai experience on both of these guys. Both used to fighting five rounds, but with glory kickboxing, you tend to bring a faster pace. There's not enough clinch time. You need to Ready. constantly have action. Salvador looks like he's fading. Right. It's been a frantic pace right. from the opening bell. Round four here, just one more round to go. Lightweight championship of the world on the line. So you see Salvador backing up now. He's waiting against the ropes, not countering as much. So it looks like Sinichai has the advantage in the fourth and fifth round. Nice low kick there from Sinichai. This is what you don't want, and that was my key to victory. And perhaps a low blow here. Could, I think it was a knee to the body. He's calling it Two, a knockdown. Three, four. It was a knee five, to the body. Six, seven, eight, nine. Hands up. He spit his mouthpiece Damn. out. Uh -oh. Dylan Salvador quits. It's over. So by way of fourth round TKO, Sinichai delivered another knockout with his patented kick to the midsection. The killer kid continues to impress. Still to come on Rewind, the welterweight title is up for grabs as Cedric Dumbay looks to defend his title for the first time against his nemesis, number one ranked Yoan Congolo. But up next, the heavyweights take to the glory ring as Jamal Ben Sadiq goes for his fifth glory victory in a row. But he'll have to go through Brazilian Guto Innocent, undefeated in glory at 4-0. It was now time for the heavyweights to battle inside the glory ring. 
Fifth-ranked Jamal, the Goliath, Ben Zadig, looked to make it five in a row. To do so, he would have to defeat seventh-ranked Guto Innocent, winner of his first four glory fights dating back to Glory 27, Chicago. What do you expect to see in this fight? Um, I expect definitely, of course, from uh, Jamal going for the big knockout and Innocent, like, uh, like he always does, move around, light, and that should be his style. Moving around, light feet it, and keeping Jim. Oh! oh! He has to watch out for that. He has to be more light, hands up, because he can't have his hands so low versus a guy like Jamal, with such so much power. They're actually trying to, Team Hammers is trying to control that power of Jamal Ben Sadiq. So see if he can set it up a little bit more than just getting overly aggressive with it. And Jamal should watch out with that with that hand, with that level. left hand so low. Because if yeah, if Guto just throws that spinning kick, it's gonna come over that hand and he's gonna get hit. Not only is Jamal Ben Sadiq a big man, he's got a huge heart. He is a cancer survivor and hopes to inspire cancer survivors around the world. He has a big heart, a really nice guy, but in the ring, he is a monster. You see how tight he is? Jamal is really tight. He should be a little bit more loose as well. Guto shakes that kick off. Guto needs to be careful not to be a standing target. He's got to hit and move a little bit. Don't stand in those corners. That's right, Joe. Definitely not in the corner, because he can't get out now. Throw that spinning back kick and get out. Jamal has promised to be more patient, but is he being too patient right now? Well, I can see him being a little bit more active with punches, uh, especially that jab. Oh, a big body shot from Jamal. You got to look at every time Sadiq throws that kick, he does damage because he's so big. So he yeah. needs to kick a little bit more himself. And you see the impact that, that he's made it, making on, uh, on Guto with those kicks. With, with those kicks. So he should be doing, keep doing that. But Especially from when Guto's in that southpaw. And if I'm Sadiq, I'm throwing that body kick. Yeah, then it has the full power, the full range as well. Sadiq, just you, just, you see, you see the movement of Gudo that's, uh, that's making Jamal nervous, especially in the corner. He's moving, and then Jamal just hesitates of coming in. And Rico, I think many opponents lose the fight before it even happens. The intimidating size and stare down from Sadiq. Yeah, but I don't feel like uh, Gudo is in, in, intimidated. He just, he just lo I even think he's too loose with his hands so low. That's dangerous. Good front kick. It might be a strategy for Gudo to try to hold off in the first round, try to maybe slow down that power, but... He tried to take down there. <laughs> Not sure why Gudo's getting comfortable in those corners. No. He's definitely not impressed with, with the power, I believe, of Jamal, but... Based on size alone, you would think that Guto would have the edge the longer this fight goes, but Jamal has been pretty... Uh, hasn't been too active with the right hand. He's been saving his energy a little bit. That's the problem with, uh, with Guto now. He's, like, he's too comfortable. He's, he's waiting too long, and he should be making those combinations and just score points. Gutos did extra legwork for this fight. In fact, he posted an Instagram video where he was pushing a car up a hill in Brazil. <laughs> Said that's standard, standard course for us down there in Brazil. So if he can push a car up a hill, he can certainly Take a push punch. Jamal Ben Sadiq around <laughs> a little bit. See, Guto just landed a good low kick. That could be a good shot for him. But he just has to be careful because that's going to set up the nice right hand for Sadiq. Jamal was able to see that one coming. Yeah, he should, he should uh, try to yeah, feint it, feint it off first and then throw the spinning kick or do something. But waiting this long and only throwing single shots is not going not gonna to take him to the win. Spinning back fist connects, but you got to put your hand higher if you want to hit him in the face. That's for damn sure. Well, Gudo's <laughs> other option is to try to get on the inside and fight head to head with him, but that's kind of hard because I think he's still intimidated by that power. Well, at some point, Gudo has to make a decision. Am I here to survive or am I here to win? 
Yeah, you're here for a fight, guys. Come on. And what's what's up with Jamal? He's, he's why is he waiting so long? If he's not intimidated by by Gudo, just just waltz him down. You know, just keep walking in. Nice overhand. A little more activity now from the Brazilian. But like you said, he's got Gudo back Great. in the corner and lets him out. Be careful with you. He should, he should throw a combination first or something. Do something first before he throws the, the spinning back in because you see it coming from miles away. Why is Jamal waiting? He's in the corner. Come on, do he something. Needs, he needs to kick. He needs to mix his punches. Right. Even a nice solid low kick for Sadiq. Try to shut down that movement of Gudo. Yeah, or the, that, bo the like, that like body kick. About in the first round, he, he threw that like that one. There's one. one. That's, that's what the, one, the one we were talking about. Every, every time he throws it, he does damage. Yeah. Set it up maybe with some straight Break. punches, stay yeah. active. You see Gudo slowing down. Trying to take down sometimes. <laughs> and another kick from Jamal. Ten seconds to go here in round two. All oh, single shots. Break. 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 Only three minutes to go in this heavyweight fight. Jamal, Big Ben Sadiq, and Guto Innocent. Like the movement that that movement that he's doing is, is perfect, but he should do he should get his advantage out of that. Look, that's good. And then uh, then he's in combination. Pop up and get out again. He did throw some good low kicks at the end of those punches, so maybe that can do some damage against Sadiq, but both these men undefeated in their last four glory fights. Somebody's gonna lose tonight. The way he's looking now, it's gonna be Gudo. But just slightly, but. It's basically coming down to the fifth scoring criteria, which is aggressiveness. Yeah. And Sadiq is definitely has the, the advantage controlling the center of the ring. Well, Rico, who do you think deserves to fight you next for the world title if you could pick your opponent? Oh, it's difficult, man. Uh, for me, I had the feeling I'm, I, I fought everybody, but. Like if uh, Jamal with his big mouth once, he can get it. Oh, nice low kick. You saw the impact of that one. And it, was, and it wasn't even, it was just body weight. It wasn't really explosive, just he threw it and you saw the impact it had on that leg. So he should throw a few more of those. So you've seen nothing from Jamal Ben Sadiq that would worry you at all if you were nothing, to fight him? Nothing. Not his speed, not his power. If he's already scared from, from uh, of Gudo's movement, how scared is he going to be in my movement? Jamal being a little more was, active. Yeah, that was a good jab from Jamal's side. I like when Jamal throws straight punches and then mixing some kicks. Gudo just doesn't seem to know what he needs to do, and Jamal seemingly thinks I've got this fight won, so why do I have to do anything? Nice, that was better. Look, that movement is perfect, but get out of there and throw some combinations. It's all or nothing now, if you want to win at least. Yeah, he has to start putting some combinations together. In my opinion, I'd go punches to low kicks because Sadiq keeps exiting, and it's a perfect time to land that low kick. Yeah, no doubt. And what you see is that Jamal is only throwing single shots. So Gudo, Gudo knows that, so he should make a combination of two or three and score some points and get out. Then he knows Jamal's gonna only throw one single shot and get in again. Couple good jabs from Sadiq. The crowd imploring the big fella to let it go. 10 seconds left here in round three. Give us a fight, gentlemen. Yeah, too late, guys. Now with his current winning streak at five, he has his sights set on a title shot with Rico Verhoeven. And he wasn't shy about making it known. I want Rico, man. I waited too long for this. I beat him Let's once, him. so where is Rico? Come into the ring, man, come. I waited too long for you. People saw this fight. How boring was this fight? I almost fell asleep. It was uh, tw tw 29 actions in a full... <laughs> 20, 29 actions. 
came you know I beat them once I beat them once it's nothing he told me hey give me he told me he told me brother did this brother did that I am not brother man I am knock you once I was I was a little boy so tell the tell the audience tell so, the audience. so. What, what was what was the problem tonight then? I you couldn't you couldn't even knock him, get him in the corner. He was in the corner standing all night. So where were you? What were you doing? Were you scared of him? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, well, this is this is so exciting. This is what kickboxing is about, man. We're trying to we're, we're making a fight and let's make it happen, man. I'm ready for this guy. I'm ready for any guy. But if he wants it, let's do it. We got this. The challenge has been set. Is this Rico's next opponent? We'll just have to wait and see. But up next, Cedric Dumbe and Yoan Congolo do battle for the welterweight title. And for the first time in a year and a half, it didn't include Nikki Holdskin. There is no love lost between these two rivals. It started at the weigh-in prior to taking the ring. No more talking. All that remains are five rounds for Glory's welterweight championship of the world as Cedric Dumbe makes his first title defense against number one ranked and arch rival, Yoan Congolo. Here we go. Fight number three between Dumbe and Congolo. This time, it couldn't mean any more. The world championship in the welterweight division is on the line. Dumbe in the white gloves, Congolo in the black. And there's so many different variables. These guys know each other really well, but they both have improved so much since their last meeting. And Dumbe with a nice exchange there. Congolo says that's a little low. Dumbe says no, it was not. Dumbe's doing a good job at countering with combinations. It's going to look like Congolo wants to get on the inside, use his power punching. But Dumbe is going to try to use his angles and be that tricky, unorthodox style he did against Nikki. Dumbe said he'd beat Congolo tonight and he'd make it look easy. And then after the fight, would just say, simply say, I told you so. Yeah, and Eve is already calling out Myrtle. And I know Myrtle wants this fight as well. Myrtle Grunhardt just won a contender tournament. And certainly we can't forget about Nikki Holskin. This is the first time in 18 months that a welterweight title fight has not involved him. The first two times these men met, it was a three-round fight. This one's scheduled for five. Who does the edge fall to in that regard? Well, I think if Dumbe is able to stay relaxed on the outside, it couldn't right. give him the advantage. But who knows, that pressure fighting from Congolo could really wear the gas tank of Dubé down. Chance of Dumbe here in Brussels. A bit surprising yesterday at the way, and it was a very pro Congolo crowd. That ruled a slip by our referee, Paul Nichols. Very tricky style. I like the way Dumbe's fighting. He's kind of hitting and moving his head. He doesn't want to keep his head in one position against the power puncher. Don't forget, Dumbe with a six inch reach advantage here. The further away he stands from Congolo, the better. I'd like to see him use his jab and his straight punches on different angles. Constantly keep mixing his stances. Right. Dumbe, only 24 years old, has accomplished so much. And this, his 71st professional fight. Congolo has been in the ring 72 times, 64 wins, 46 by knockout. And Dumbe scattering back towards the ropes. Dumbe did a good job at mixing punches, but Congolo caught him. That's what he needs to do. Congolo keep mixing those counter punches. says no that was not a knockdown <laughs> round two scheduled for five an entertaining first round quite a buzz here in brussels in this arena both men fluent in french a lot of trash talk coming from that language this week that unorthodox style and that, that clipped the temple of congolo that head kick has Congolo scrambling, and he tries to play defense by turning to offense, but Dubé going in for the close here. Dubé needs to be careful for that counter-punching. 
The best moment of the fight so far for Dube and a low kick sends Dube to the mat, but he's up quick. Congolo seemed to recover pretty quickly from that kick. Yeah, it looked like he stumbled there a little bit, but in that exchange, he threw a counter punch and slowed down and woke Dube up. And that was a nice right counter punch from Dube. And it seems like Congolo's body's still a little bit loose. And a nice counter right there from the champ. And again. It's that unorthodox style that Dumbay throws. He mixes angles, switches stances, punches on different angles, makes it really hard for pressure fighters to, to get inside and counter. Congolo oh, switching. there's an uppercut. Congolo switching stances. Could be from those low kicks adding up. Who knows? And usually it's Dumbe who gives us the nice European uppercut, but this time it was Congolo. Constantly switching stances, making it very difficult for Congolo to find his timing and his distance. I'm wondering if those low kicks from Dubé are adding up because Congolo keeps switching stances. Got a knee there and another low kick. Dubé spreading the offense around thus far. Still waiting to see one of those vintage uppercuts. Well, you asked me earlier, but I have this fight two rounds up to zero for Dubé. He's just more active, he's landing more, and he's making it very difficult for Congolo to, to do much. Great. Great. This is a title fight. It will go five rounds if need be. Non-title fights in glory are just three three-minute rounds. Another counterpunch that time, a left there from Dubé. I'd like to see Congolo mix in body punches because Dubé keeps moving his head backwards. That leaves the leg and the body open. So if Congolo starts mixing in some body punch, he can find more success landing, landing to the head. You've probably seen some Cameroonian flags here in the arena. That's because Dubé was actually born in Cameroon, relocated to Paris with his parents when he was nine years old. So several Africans making the trip here tonight to Brussels to cheer on the Cameroonian-born Dumbe. Dumbe just slipped his head off and threw a right hand. Congolo staying in the southpaw. It's amazing that Dumbe can say, stay so calm in the line of fire from Congolo. He's slipping those punches and not making a big deal about it, like that. Yeah, he right. keeps slipping, he's moving. He's very slick with his head right. movement. That's why I'm saying Congolo needs to attack the body. And Congolo's staying southpaw because I really feel those low Oh, that knee may have hurt Congolo. And now Dube landing some big punches. Congolo fighting back. And there's an uppercut. And another. Congolo's back in orthodox. That's when Dube needs to go back to the low kick. There's Congolo attacking the body. Another good round for Cedric Dumbe and a head kick followed up with a right hand. Good job at Dumbe mixing those knees. And a spinning back kick from Congolo as Dumbe feigns that it hurt him. And then comes back with some punches. Dumbe is certainly slick. A slower round for Dumbe, a little bit better for Congolo. Dumbe 
Bay's corner. He put water on him, but it's like he's coming out of a swimming pool. Both his legs covered in water. So are his trunks. And Paul Nichols asked that he be dried off a bit. You can sense the urgency now from Congolo. Has to no Oh, and a left hand. Dumbay shakes it off again, but it did connect. Dumbay's getting caught with his chin a little too high. He's still got to be careful with those counter punches of, of Congolo. Congolo does pack quite a punch, a 73% knockout ratio, and he might just need one of those here tonight. Total punches landed, Dumbe 41, Congolo 23. Congolo starting to pick up that activity. And he's really starting to showboat is Dumbe. Can't be cashing the check just yet. You saw what it did to Simon Marcus in his title fight last year against Jason Wilness. He needs to be careful. He's going to take that one shot that's going to make him question all that showboating and head movement. And we will see that fight again next month in Copenhagen. Simon Marcus versus Jason Wilness. I'm pumped for that fight. Good for low kicks by Dumbe. Inside low kick, nice snapping sound from Dumbe. Heads up. The left hook to the body, that's what I was saying earlier. I'd like to see Congolo really mix in the body punching and low kicks of his own. And a spinning left hand from Dumbe. Well, Congolo is running out of time if he's behind, and we think he is. Well, he's getting frustrated, and it would be a, a bad idea for Dubé to sit in the pocket and exchange. So Dubé is doing a good job at frustrating Congolo on the outside. Their first two fights were only scheduled for three rounds, so they're in uncharted territory here, round four. Cheap shot there, no doubt about it, from Congolo. At least it didn't land. Dumbe promised to win this fight with a smile on his face, and he is dancing, laughing, sticking his tongue out, having a good time. And it has been effective. And you saw that from Congolo. Congolo's four-year-old son, Warren Kingston predicted his dad would win by a late knockout. Let's see if Junior is right. His son predicted the Ben Mansour fight. <laughs> he said dad would win with a body shot, and that's what he did. There's that pressure that Congola needs to bring, but there goes Dubé and his trickiness being unorthodox. Dumbe continues to jump backwards laughing. And you can see on the face of Congolo, he's had about enough of this, but there's nothing he seems to be able to do about it. Dumbe has the whole welterweight division after him. He got in Nicky's head, he got in Congolo's head, he even has Myrtle Grunhardt wanting to take him out. So his antics outside of the ring are definitely working, and the way he fights on inside, yeah, Paul Nichols has got to get control here. Congolo threw a punch while Dube was on the ground. Time. Both of you, stop messing around, adhere to the rules and fight. Do you understand? Do you understand? Time in. Fight! Well, I think Dube is doing what he has to do. He's trying to frustrate him. He is being unorthodox. He's moving his head, avoiding punches, landing. It's Congolo's frustration that seems to be the difference. Dumbe refusing to stand still for Congolo. But Congolo does have one punch knockout power, and look at the slickness of Dumbe. And what can Congolo do right now, Joe? He needs to just keep going on the inside. He needs to mix into body. 
Dubais, that's when he's most successful, when he's throwing those body punches. He's got to understand that Dubay keeps moving his head. Dubay certainly is entertaining, if nothing else. His defense has been even more spectacular than his offense. But unlike boxing, you don't get scored on good defense here in kickboxing. Dubay landed a good uppercut. 40 seconds to go here. Does Congolo have that one punch power left in him? And can he land it? It's those angles, the turning, it's very slick movement. Good footwork, good head movement. Dumbay definitely thinks he won the first four rounds because he's coasting in this last one. wrapped up. He did it with a smile on his face. Congolo frustrated, but at least acting like he won the fight. It's hard to see how he did, though. So after two defeats at the hands of Yoan Congolo, Cedric Dumbe gets his first victory in three tries over the number one ranked fighter and now looks ahead toward his second title defense. That will come in June at Glory 42 Paris. That will do it for Glory 39 Rewind. We move to Copenhagen and Glory 40, coming your way on Saturday, April 29th. Don't forget to check your local listings for day and time in your area. Are you ready for Glory?